Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is a great time of year, isn't it? I mean, everybody seems to like Christmas. There's just something special about it. People seem to be more generous this time of year. There's more focus on peace on earth, goodwill toward all. Lots of people get caught up in the Christmas spirit, and it's great. But this time of year can also feel like a fantasy, you know? Because your problems and the problems of the world don't take a Christmas break. Like, nationally, we just got walloped by a major winter storm. Or locally, this past week, two children were kidnapped in a carjacking that put everybody on high alert until both kids were found to be safe. Or personally, maybe this is your first Christmas with an empty seat at your family's dinner table. No matter how many decorations you hung up or how many Christmas songs you hear on the radio, these problems are still around. And because of that, this time of year, many people try to go back to the old, familiar things that don't change. Because then maybe they can have some sense of stability. And for some people, this famous story of Jesus' birth can be like that. It's familiar, right? It's comfortable, it's predictable. Even if people don't know much about the Bible, they at least know this story. They know about Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem. They know about Jesus being laid in the manger. They know about the shepherds coming to visit, and it's always the same. But even that can feel like a fantasy, too. Because I doubt that any of us have ever had an angel show up to tell us we'll be pregnant. We've never had to travel to the land of our ancestors because of a census. None of us have ever given birth where animals live. At least I hope not. These events in Luke 2 can seem like something that happened to somebody else a long time ago. Not something that happens to us today. It's kind of like all of your old favorite Christmas movies that are always the same year after year. You bring them out every December because that's just what you do. They are comfortable and familiar, but they still feel disconnected from our real lives. I mean, think about it. Nobody will ever have the kind of romance you see in those holiday Hallmark movies. Nobody's Christmas vacation will ever be as horrible as Clark Griswold's. No one has ever had an angel show up and tell them what life would be like had they never been born. Real life just doesn't work like that. Because in real life, we've got to drag ourselves out of bed in the morning. We go grocery shopping, and we run errands, and we try to get the kids where they need to go. We disagree with people. We get irritable and frustrated. We scroll through our phones while we're sitting on the toilet. This is real life. Our days are long, our energy is low, and our bodies are tired. In real life, we often get ignored and forgotten and just treated like a cog in a machine. So then how in the world does this familiar story from Luke 2 really connect to us in our lives? How is this not just another fantasy escape? 
Well, it connects to us through the shepherds. Of course, we know the shepherds are in the Christmas story, but think about it. Mary is the leading lady. Joseph is the best supporting actor. The angels are divine, so they look really cool with all their CGI special effects. But the shepherds, they're just regular people. They're the extras. They're the nameless, faceless crowd. Nobody would ever run up to a shepherd to ask for their autograph or a selfie. They don't have fancy titles like Mother of God or Guardian of Jesus. They are the ones who are unknown and unrecognized and easily forgotten by the rest of the world. That's because being a shepherd was not a glamorous job. It was hard, dirty work that very few people wanted to do. So long as the sheep were cared for, then nobody paid much attention to that. But if they didn't do their job, or they did it poorly, then people were quick to criticize and complain. Maybe you know that feeling. Right? Nobody seems to appreciate you when you do your job well. But as soon as you do one thing wrong, then they get all in your case about it. So imagine these shepherds on that day when Jesus was born. For them, it was just a regular day. They were dealing with sheep who were wandering away. They were arguing with other shepherds about the best way to take care of the sheep. And they were just worried about making it through the night. Because who knows what predators were hiding in the shadows. Yeah, maybe they heard about the census, but they didn't really pay much attention to it. I mean, the people in Rome didn't care about them, so why should they care about Rome? The census might be the latest headline news, but Rome never helped them find food or make sure they had a place to stay or kept their sheep safe, so why should they care? Right? This was real life for these shepherds. And maybe this is real life for you, too. Right? Some days you're just trying to make it by. You feel good if you can just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You hear the headline news or you read them on social media, but sometimes they don't really feel like they matter in your life. Those things are happening somewhere else to somebody else. Or maybe you feel like the governmental leaders have no clue about what problems you face in your daily life. They just seem out of touch with reality. That's what's going on for these shepherds. For them, there was no peace on earth and goodwill toward all. There was no winter wonderland. There was no Christmas break. It was just regular life. Day after day. With the same problems and the same worries and some new ones added in there too. Everybody else might be able to travel this time, but these shepherds, they still had to work. But then, in the midst of a regular day, an angel shows up and says, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Well, of course, we know that line, but think about it here. After Jesus was born, 
the very first people God wanted to tell about it were the people with real world struggles and fears. Because this was good news for them. This is good news for you. Notice, to you is born this day. God wanted to make sure that the shepherds of all people heard this good news first. But why? Well, when you have good news to share, who are the people you want to tell first? It's the people you're close to. The people you care about. The people you love, right? That's how God feels about those shepherds. That's how God feels about you. Now, there are two really important details about these shepherds that we need to notice. here. First, there are 20 verses that tell this story in Luke 2. The first seven verses are about Mary and Joseph. The remaining 13 are about the shepherds. So basically, two-thirds of the story is about them hearing the good news and responding to it. That alone should tell us something about who's a priority here. The second thing to notice is how the shepherds responded. They said, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. At first, that doesn't seem like that big a deal, but think about what it means. They dropped everything and went. And yes, we've heard about people doing this before. Think of Abram dropping everything and leaving the land of his ancestors. Or later on, the disciples by the Sea of Galilee dropping their nets to follow Jesus. But we often see people like Abram and those first disciples as spiritual superstars. We see them as somehow different from us. But the shepherds? They were regular people like you and me. And they decided to drop everything and go. Now that doesn't really make sense, does it? I mean, who would take care of the sheep while they were away? They can't just abandon them like that, right? Let's say that you were just going about your day. You were worrying about money. You were trying not to lose your temper. You were wondering what you'll do for dinner that night. And all of a sudden, you heard that God was doing something amazing in the world. Would you drop everything and go look for it? Or would you say, "Eh, no thanks, I'm too busy right now. Or I'm too tired. Or, I've already done my time. Let someone else go and check it out. Right? We can't just drop everything and go like that, right? Real life doesn't work that way. We have obligations and responsibilities and chores. We have people who count on us to get stuff done. And maybe that's why a lot of us like playing pretend a little bit this time of year. Because maybe we can put those responsibilities down, even if just for a brief moment. But then we have to pick them right back up again. We can't live in this fantasy forever. But what if this story isn't a fantasy? 
What if this story of Jesus' birth isn't just a familiar story on the same level as all those famous Christmas movies? What if what the angels told the shepherds really is true? To you is born the Savior of the world. That good news changes things, doesn't it? It changes the world, and it changes your life. That's something you do want to check out. Because Jesus has come to you, and he has come for you. In your real, broken, messy life. And so tonight, we hear this promise. And like the shepherds leaving their fields, we leave this place and we go look for Jesus too. Because Christmas isn't just about hearing the good news. It's also about seeing Christ out in the world. So we go out and we see that he is with young couples who are having babies. He's with people who are scared of the future. He's with those who are far away from home. He is with them and he is with you. And then, not only did the shepherds see Christ in the world... But they also returned to their jobs and told others about him. That's how we respond to this good news too. We hear about him, we see him at work in the world, and we return to our daily lives to tell others about him. That's because Christmas is not just some story of what happened way back when. It's not just a familiar tale that we brush off every December. It's not even just what we do together in this place on this night. No, Christmas is about how the God of all creation loves you so much that he comes to you in your daily life. With Christmas, you are reminded that you are not forgotten or ignored or taken advantage of by God. Instead, you are remembered and treasured and cherished. And even though this real life is messy, God loves you so much That he would rather be in this messy world with you than outside of this messy world without you. Let me say that again. God loves you so much that he would rather be in this messy world with you than outside of this messy world without you. So this time of year is not about playing pretend. It's not about some fantasy escape from regular life. No, this is about how God has come into our regular lives. Because God loves you. And God wants you to be the first to know that. And then, like those shepherds, we can't help but tell others about that too. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. That's what Christmas is all about. Merry Christmas. In the name of this one who has come into our messy lives, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.